Number six. No, the power of no, meaning N O, which is really can be a yes. And this is in, interesting and important because everything that I'm teaching is, is the power of saying yes in life. But I want you to keep remembering that sometimes you have to say no in life, and saying no is actually an internal yes. Christina reminded me about that, something about yesterday. I was having a conversation with somebody that internally I knew it was not feeling good for me, and I do not know why. Well, I do now, because I want to be liked, because we all suffer from that. And so you compromise your own inner integrity by, because you're scared that people aren't going to like you, or they're going to think you're hard to deal with, or they're going to, who knows what you think they're going to think about you. Probably they're not going to think anything about you, because if they're already coming at you from a place that isn't making you feel good about you, they don't feel good about you either. That's kind of brilliant. Did you just get what I just said? I don't know what I just said, but that's so good. Meaning, the people that you're scared to say no to are probably the people that don't give a rat's ass about you anyway. But we're still so scared to say no because what will they think? Or they won't like me. Or, you know what, the people that really are in your life in a, in a profound way, saying no to them is not going to disrupt that relationship. It's actually going to solidify it. So I subjected myself to a conversation that I found was not very uplifting for me, and I, had, I heard the answer within 30 seconds. Within 30 seconds of that answer, I knew. And here I'm always teaching about how we know, and yet I subjected myself for a half hour of sort of like, you know, whatever that was, and it did not make me feel good. When I could have just said, no, thank you, click, got it? The last two... Uh, last three. Know that it's up to you. What's that mean? Listen, you guys, your life is up to you. It's not up to your mom, not up to your dad, your, your teacher, your agent, your manager, your sibling, your spouse. It's up to you. But what I think is amazing about this is when you begin to realize that it's up to you, it just requires you to take a step. Another way to think about it is this. There are all sorts of unforeseen uh, Magical fairies, if you will. I don't know what I want to call it. That's what's coming to my mind. But it's literally like, there's like this, an angel. There's like all these angels waiting at the starting line, just ready. Is this like a touchdown pose right here? Like, so like they're, they're all at the starting line or at the, the what is a football term, people? The 10-yard line? Whatever. They're all there ready to jump in. But they're not going to interfere until you take the step you got to take the step, and then all of a sudden, whoosh, you'll find that you'll be aid, aided and embedded along your way. All sorts of resources and people, information and synchronicities and dynamic relationships will unfold, but you've got to take the step. Lao Tzu said it best, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. You've got to take it. Nine and ten go together. Know that the moment... No, this is eight, sorry. Know that the moment always wants to show you the truth. The moment always wants to show you the truth, but you have to know that sometimes you have to wait for it. Ah, oh, rats. The moment always wants to show you the truth because the moment is truth. But sometimes you have to wait for it. Why? Because of our own resistance to go where truth wants to take us, because it's scary. Let me just give you a classic example of this. It just happened a little while ago. A good friend of mine came over. He's going through a lot of stuff right now, and I knew he wanted to come over and talk. But he came over, we sat down, I was having lunch, and he, he sat down, and he said, no, I just want you to talk. And I said, no, I don't have anything to say. You obviously want to talk. And he would not talk about what was really going on for him. So, you just wait. And sure enough, actually in my case, I don't wait. I kept going like this. And then I got it out. And sure enough. So the moment wants to show us the truth, but sometimes you have to wait for it because it's like you got to catch up with, oh God, the fear of naming it. But what's actually, it's really a release. It's very, it's like, oh God, taking a burden off your shoulders to be able to share it. Yes, eight and nine, and this is ten. Thank you, Rich. Number ten. <laughs> know that all of your knowing comes from stepping into the unknown. Holy crap. What is Tony teaching? All of your knowing comes from stepping into the unknown. This is golden, people. Think about it. 
everything you've always wanted, all the victories, I've said this over and over again, come in you stepping into the unexpected. But let's even like think about it in a different way. Babies, the way babies grow, babies grow and develop and evolve, their whole world is unknown. It's a whole new world. That's what it is. And so they're gaga and gooing, googling. She has a baby. She yeah, can prove it. You're going to have a baby. They are, all, it's all about the mystery. And you know what? They are not caught up in comfortability, safety, the knowingness, the familiar. People, that stuff, that part of the unknowingness is still the part that you're seeking. The problem is, is as we become adults, we become seduced by the familiar. We become seduced by the comfort zone of it. We, we become seduced by the stuff that is known. But you know what? That's a sort of death. It is a death. So you got to get back to that childlike seeker. And you know, what's interesting is that the answers to everything that you're seeking is going to be in stepping into the unknown. And sometimes it's like galvanizing steel. Sometimes it takes a while. It's just like the, the point I said before it. Sometimes you have to wait for it a little bit. But it only occurs there. And you know what that actually transforms into? The knowing actually transforms into wisdom, which we all possess at a, at a deep level, whether you realize it or not.